Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we are going to talk about that most maligned subject, dry brushing. Uh, so I remember when I started painting back in the 90s and there was no YouTube and very little access to sort of painting knowledge. You either had it or you didn't. Maybe if you were lucky you had a friend who knew a few things. Uh, but I remember the first day that somebody taught me dry brushing, and I was like, oh my god, the world has changed. The world has changed. Um, but, of course, as we move on in our painting, we then begin to hear a lot of the negative feedback of dry brushing, and or we stop using it, or we're, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I think there's a lot of people out there who uh, feel like, Oh, you know, good painters don't dry brush. Well, let's just dispel that right out of the gate. Good painters dry brush plenty. Um, Victoria Lamb, who's one of the, who's an amazing painter, um, was famous and won, you know, many golden demons. Did beautiful dioramas and displays. Was famous for using dry brushing as a as a component of her painting. And I don't think anybody would say she wasn't a good painter. Um, if I, I would like to think I'm at least an okay painter. I'm, and uh, I use it quite frequently. The key with dry brushing is we need to know when to use it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. When and how. Because dry brushing, just like anything else, any other technique, has lots of ways it can be varied and altered depending on how we want to apply it. Okay? So I've got some stuff here. I have a little orc art boy. I got an old kit bash skeleton. And I have a zenithal primed space marine. Okay, and then I've got a base down here too. Okay, so I want to talk in turn about dry brushing and then we're going to do some stuff with them. So the most traditional use of dry brushing would be for somebody like this guy. And the first time we dry brush a skeleton, it's a revelation, okay? Because maybe you have something like this, like a brown undercoat, and then you dry brush it and suddenly the bones just come to life. And you're like, oh my god, I just painted that skeleton in like eight seconds with this magic technique. But then you come over here and you try to do the same thing on Mr. Space Marine. And it falls apart. It doesn't work. It doesn't look good. Right? And the reason is because of what it is. Like what the figure is made up of. Okay? So, let's get to some basics when we talk about how we apply dry brushing. First things first. Dry brushing is going to generally work the best when we have a large amount of small texture on the miniature. So the classic example of this is a base, right? A base, something like this, where I've got all this dirt and grit, this is the primary case for dry brushing. I'm not going to go in here and highlight that rock, and then that rock, and then that rock, and then that rock, you get the idea, right? That would be insane. And the texture is such that it's small, we just need to create variation. So we can do it perfectly through dry brushing and washes, okay? The skeleton, where he's supposed to look maybe a little dusty, a little dry, and he has a lot of interesting texture like his ribs, his fingers, the separation in his bones, or these little horns on his head. These are going to come out well in dry brushing. But these two guys, with their big, round, flat areas, there's nothing for the dry brush to grab onto. Dry brushing works by depositing pigment where the brush hits a texture difference. Okay, so like this little ridge on my glove, as I drag it across, the pigment's so dry, the idea is that this pulls a bit of the pigment off and deposits it right here. Because we're working with dry pigment when we're doing this, that's part of naturally how we get going, it's naturally going to look a little more rough, a little more matte, a little more chalky than any other way we paint. But there are ways to compensate. Oh, for the emperor, he's fallen. 
I'm going to have to paint him like a Dark Angel now or something since he's fallen. That's an in-joke world, right? Or that's an in-world joke, right? Okay. I don't know. I don't really play Space Marines, but I see people make that joke all the time. All right. So what we're going to do, I just got myself like three thumbs down by Dark Angel players, I'm sure. Uh, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of show how we can vary our dry brushing technique to suit these other things and lots of uses for dry brushing because I think people need to think about it more as an element of your overall painting as opposed to just a technique where it's like the last thing you do, okay? And there's lots of ways to use it to really good effect even on miniatures like this where there's, they have all these like soft round spaces, okay? All right, so Let's start on Mr. Skeleton, because he's the most obvious traditional case. Here I have what I think is, for most people, pretty much like a dry brush they have. This is like a, some art brush I bought in a big pack, right? It's long, flat, got a pretty much flat edge, right? And what I would do for the skeleton is I'll get out like a bone color. Here I have some scale color Mojave White, which is a bone color I love. Uh, Shout out to uh, David Soper, who turned me on to this color. It's a gorgeous color. Okay. So, what do we do? I mean, let's let's talk about, let's just get the absolute basics. So I've got a little bit of the paint. I'm going to use a dry palette for this because I don't want it to be wet. I'm just going to dip my brush straight in, up and down like that. Draw some of it out. That's what I get, right? Okay. Then I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to wipey, wipey, wipey. And in the normal world, you want to make sure you have like that. Now, uh, the, one of the reasons I wear a glove is so I can test stuff like this. See these ridges in my glove? If I can go across them, and not leave, not deposit paint down in there, then I know I'm okay. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and dry brush Mr. Skeleton. So I'm moving across the skeleton, back and forth, both directions. This thing is, this is one of my ancient figures I pulled off because I didn't have any unpainted skeletons, except for this guy. He's just been hanging out somewhere in the bottom of a box. I think I primed him with like, I don't even know what I primed him with, some kind of like really horrible paint. It is awful. Just the worst. Right? I don't, I don't know what house paint reject bottle I sprayed this guy with in, you know, 1999, but boy is it not great. But it's fine for our purposes. So I go bi-directionally over the mini. Now, a key to normal dry brushing is one of the one of the first tips I'm gonna give, push less hard than you think, okay? The paint will come off. It wants to come off. You don't need to like, I see a lot of people just like, ah, I must get all this paint off in like two scrapes. Don't do that. Just light touch, go over it, and just work it lots of times. It's still fast. Like that's still faster by far than if I had gone in and done that. Now we can see there, bada bing, we've got a skeleton, right? He's, his ribs got preserved, but he has that dry, that chalky look, right? Now, one of the ways we can fix that, of course, as, I'm, as you may or may not know, hopefully, but one of the ways we can fix that is we can go over it with a nice thin wash or something like that, right? Like. I could get him up to being a skeleton with that, uh, with that, and then I could just like run some Seraphim CP over him real quick, okay, and smooth that out. And that's one of the first ways we can utilize dry brushing. One of the best ways to utilize dry brushing is to not make it your final step, okay. Now washes have their own problems with looking dirty and messy and coffee staining and stuff. But for the moment, let's ignore that. <laughs> and 
I'll get a little bit of that out on my palette. Okay. And then, of course, we just run the wash over him. And what that's going to do is flow back down those recesses, hopefully even out that color. Get rid of the worst of the chalkiness, right? It's also going to tint the whole thing and get rid of the white, but we'll fix that. Now, what I'm doing here is probably literally the most basic thing in the world. This is what you first learn when you're miniature painting, but I'm covering everything because this is the ultimate guide to dry brushing. Okay. So what's gonna happen is then we, we're gonna get a nice, we'll smooth that out a little bit. We have our little crappy skeleton. Wonderful, okay. Let's let him dry. Now, this is the most easy established use of dry brushing, right? Took a relatively hard bristled dry brush. I got some paint, I, wiped most of it off and then I picked over these raised surfaces and created, you know, and got the detail picked out. Done and dusted. Literally dusted because that's how the miniatures look when you dry brush. But I would argue that one of your best uses for dry brushing is actually to uh, work in an overlap color. So one of the things you can do with dry brushing, especially on something like terrain, okay, is I can take that same brush. Now I've got my base here. And I've got a kind of this brown color. One of the things I like to do is when I'm gonna then, I've got some flesh tone here. As you, if, if you've watched my previous basing videos, you know that flesh tone is your dry brush color of choice for dirt. But I like it because I can use it to get and mix everything together. So what I mean by that is not only can I pick out all this detail on the dirt really quick and easy, but you see how I'm purposely going up onto these rocks some? I'm doing that because when I wash over the rocks, I want some of this dirt highlighting to carry up. So then I can get rid of all that, go back into my white, and then I can dry brush just my rock with the white and overlap some of that into the dirt. When you're doing something like basing, this sort of like quick, dirty dry brushing where you're, especially a natural world base, where you're kind of getting all over everything is a great way to blend your colors together through the highlights. And when you wash, you do the same thing. Okay, so I'll usually do this a lot if I have bases that are, um, you know, set in the natural world where dirt is getting on everything. I'll bring some of the dirt highlight dry brush up onto the rocks or the bricks or the building or whatever I happen to have mixed in. And then I'll bring some of the dry brush from that down onto the rocks. So we sort of color align everything. And then we wash it and go on from there. So that's a simple one. It can be on very, very rough surfaces um, fur is another good example. Um, if you've got a section of fur, so here's another miniature. If you've got a section of fur like this, you can blend it solely with dry brushing, right? Because I could start here and do a very dark dry brush, wipe it, medium dry brush, wipe it, light dry brush. And because I'm just depositing on the inner one, I could even then wash it to bring them all in line. It's a great way to do simple, quick blending on like things like fur cloaks, all right? Stuff like that. Just an option. We're gonna come back to Mr. Chimera in a little while. Let's talk about other use cases. All right, so that's a lot of the basic stuff. Now let's talk about the other fun ways we can use dry brushing. I talk a lot about undershading and zenithal priming. Um, because I'm a big believer in it. Uh, the reality is I, I could never go back to like base coating a color. I couldn't do it. I, with, with undershading and, and zenithal priming and sketching, I can paint a high contrast, you know, decent looking miniature in an hour that might take somebody using a base coat method four hours. I, I don't have three hours to waste in my life. Okay. Um, uh, and and so to me, it's just 
it is the way to paint, period, end of story. Um, now, that being said, not everybody has an airbrush. Maybe you've got a black primed orc like this, and you're like, well, you know, I'd really like to, Vince, I'd love to zenithal, but I don't have any way to airbrush this guy. And using a rattle can is really, really annoying because if it's, uh, if it's too, too humid, too warm, too cold, too anything, I can't go outside and rattle can prime. Well, imaginary person I'm talking to, that's a great point. So why do that? When we can take a pretty big brush like I've got here, we can get a little white paint. This is just regular dead white. Like literally, this is called dead white, which is why I like it. Okay. Now, same trick. We're gonna go into our white paint. We're gonna wipe that off on our paper towel. Wipey, wipey, wipey. But this time, instead of going bi-directionally, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to come straight down. I'm only going down. Okay. No up. The brush never hits going up. I'm only going down. Okay, if you watched my guide to value sketching, by the way, you know how I carefully filled in a bunch of areas and, and did a value sketch. Yeah, here's like an eight second value sketch. There you go. Now he's zenithal primed, all right? See, he looks really dark from below and really bright from above. That's it, there you go. I just zenithal primed a guy without ever getting out an airbrush, ever getting out a white rattle can, anything like that. And by the way, I can go back in in the same way and, and tear this out by simply going over him again, only at the top, like with his little round shoulder pads. We can just really make sure we get the high, high points and really blow those out with like a little second dry brushing. Now, is it rougher than an airbrush? Well, yeah, but is it still gonna do pretty much the same thing and give you most of the same advantages? Also, yes, right? Like I can run a thin glaze of some green over that orc Let's get out some green. I can run a thin glaze of some green over that orc and maintain all that undershading. And get an instant value sketch on that orc, right? Just like that. And I can refine it from there. Boom, bang, bang. I've got a highlighted work. What did that take? I don't know, a few seconds? Oh, his little nose isn't done. Well, that's just gonna bother me. There we go. Now he's, ha now he's got a happy little nose. Okay, so it's a great way to get your undershading done quick when you need to zenithal. You can also reinforce zenithal with a quick dry brush in the same way. So if you've got a basic zenithal item, you can give it a solid dry brush like that to sort of pick out those edges and things like that and make them stronger, okay? So that's your next use for dry brushing. I do this sort of thing all the time, like not over straight black, but like I, the, the pick out the edges and stuff 
It is a wonderful trick. It saves you so much time later. When your edge is already pre-edge highlighted and you're laying down a glaze, one glaze gives you shadows, highlights, and edge highlights. One glaze. That's pretty good. As far as efficiency goes, it's pretty good. Okay, let's put him to the side. Ah, uh, Mr. Space Marine. Oh, aren't you the problem child of the dry brushing world? This guy is emblematic of everything that people, why people uh, aren't happy with their dry brushing. Okay. Because he is so soft and round. His big shoulders, his helmet, this backpack thing, his little legs and boots. He has edges. They're not incredibly prominent, right? They're not like Mr. Skeleton back here, who's got, you know, ribs and bones on his fingers and, you know, all this nonsense, right? So what are we going to do? Well, now we're going to talk about a different way to dry brush. And this is a way that I dry brush quite a bit um, because it's more controlled. I'm going to call it a soft dry brush for lack of a better term, but it's one of the most useful things you can, you can do. It's the same paint, but instead of using a normal hard bristled brush, like these synthetic hard bristled dry brushes we get, there's a bunch of them. I have like a ton of these because you beat the crap out of them, obviously, when you dry brush. But these guys, they're good, but the problem is, notice how even now, see, look how split apart those bristles are. That can't help but be rough and chalky. Now let's look at this. This is a makeup brush, okay? Uh, I stole my first one from uh, my wife and that got me in trouble. So then I went to Amazon and I bought those. So there's a massive, you could get like a massive pack of, ma this isn't all of them by the way, there's more still in my drawer. You can get a massive, you can get massive packs of these soft bristled makeup brushes for like $5. And they're unbelievably soft, right? Because they're supposed to be, because they go on your face. <laughs> Putting on makeup with this would be highly uncomfortable and ineffective. You need something soft that's gonna like spread the, the pigment around. Wait a minute, what did I just say? Oh yeah, I sorry, I meant makeup because makeup is just often pigment. It's basically what a lot of like, that sort of uh, blush and contouring stuff is. It's just pigment. What are we doing? Well, we're trying to extract just the pigment out of the paint, but we want it to be soft. Okay. So here's one of my favorite things to do. So we take a very soft bristled brush. And by the way, there are like super, super duper soft makeup brushes. So you can, go, you can take this all the way. Um, you know, go test them or something and at the, at the, like the makeup counter. Don't buy anything expensive, but you can sort of get an idea. I don't know if they have names. I don't know enough about makeup brushes to do that. All right, but we're gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna go into my white here and the great thing about these stupid makeup brushes because they're so cheap is like, I mean, you get like 20 for five bucks. So like when they're dead, I'm just, who cares? Throw it in the trash, get a new one. I'm gonna really wipe most of it off. So I'm just working my paper towel here real hard. Okay. Then I test. All right. So now what I wanna do is instead of that previous pressure, what we're gonna do is a nice very light, soft, repeated touch across the thing. And we're gonna really, in fact, I still have a little too much paint. We're really gonna work that paint out of there. We want almost none on there. There we go. And with this very light touch, I'm just gonna directionally work across the miniature over and over again very light touch now because i have very little pigment because i have very very soft bristles 
and because I'm using a very, very light touch on the miniature, what's happening is I'm not really getting that chalk effect. See, look at how we got all the edges picked out of that. But we didn't get that chalking. We didn't get that normal effect. Instead, what we get is really just sort of a soft highlight that gets applied where the pigment, very small amounts of it, get deposited on the edge of the surface. The key here is two things. One, I have so much less paint. That is the number one thing I can say. Wipe your paint off until you think you're done, then wipe your paint off a lot more. Like, you saw how much paint I took off of this thing. Wipe it until you think you're done, then wipe it a lot more, a lot more. Because if you're getting big, messy streak lines, you have too much paint, or you're pushing too hard, or both. One quick note about this is it will pull every mold line in the universe out. <laughs> so if you don't clean your figs properly, like I didn't clean this guy, I don't know if that's showing up. Yeah, there you go. Every single mold line is going to be real visible real fast. Right? And now that guy's ready for his, for his simple glaze. And he can be a space marine. Just like that. And you can see how we created that nice soft highlight. Okay? Um, you can do this with any color. I'm doing this with sort of a white and things like this. To... Uh because that I want, I'm using it as undershading. You could do this as your final step as well. Okay, there's no reason you can't. You wanna make sure you get the brush nice and dry afterward. Let's turn him into a space marine, shall we? I made a joke earlier. about him being a dark angel, but I don't really have any great dark angels colors. So instead, like handy, instead, sorry, let's very quickly put some red over him so we can see what that looks like. Yeah, here we go. Okay. This stuff is really powerful, so we're gonna thin it. This is just some red ink from Vallejo. I'm not going to paint the whole mini, obviously. Hmm, it's not as intense as I expected it to be. Well, that's fine. It'll still give the idea. Let's get out that crimson. Our red ink is weak. There we go. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to come back and show what, all, what else we can do at the end here in a moment. We'll let him dry now. But you can see how all that wonderful shading and, and such comes right through. Okay. So that's good enough. That'll give us something to work with. Let's go back to Mr. Skeleton. Because the other thing we can do with our soft dry brush is we can finish off after our wash. So before we did it very roughly, right? And we were able to be successful with it because it was over a very dark color. We brought out and picked out all the detail. Um, by the way, one of the big reasons I like to do this over something like a black prime mini like I had with Mr. Orc here is because without it, it can be really hard to even see detail on miniatures that are just in black, right? Like it can be hard to even know what the heck you're painting. 
but with this nice quick dry brush over the top, all the details picked out and instantly it becomes much easier. So here what I'm gonna do is again, nice soft dry brush. So with that nice soft dry brush, we now see we've got the completed skeleton. And you know, just that quick. We could even go up to a nice white, right? So we could go back to our original white. And again, using this sort of softer dry brush method, we can get some nice soft highlights on there without going in and specifically highlighting. Let's say we're trying to paint, oh, I don't know, a very large number of skeletons, like all the skeletons. Let's say you've got a Nagash and he needs a lot of skeleton buddies. Yes, he does. Again, we're down brushing. So we're dry brushing, but we're only going down. And we're only gonna focus on certain areas that would catch the light the most. And there we go. If we're just looking for fast and quick, it's a great way to go. Now, let's go back to Mr. Blood Angel, who's all red. You might have noticed a little bit of a cut there. I may have had a little bit of problem and ran out of space. I did not realize my camera card was full, so that's okay. All right. So I've made the best use of my time and finished painting him red. We can use our soft dry brush method even after our color's on. So this guy's all red now. But what we can do, remember I said when flesh tone was a pretty good color for, for brown? You know what else flesh tone's an interesting under highlight for? Red. This kind of like mid-tone flesh tone is really great for that. So what we can do is just come in and again, very soft downward dry brush. Very light touch. And what this does, because we're using this flesh tone, is it brings in that warmth. See how we get that warmth in there? Get that vaguely orange color. Now, then what we can do is we can go back to, I have another red here. I have a slightly orangier red prepared. I'm gonna take that, thin some of that out. Make a quick little glaze out of that on my palette back here. If you don't know what I mean by glaze, I do have some videos on that as well. I'm not washing, I'm being controlled with it. Oh yeah. So we get, because we're not dry brushing last, even with that soft dry brush, we're still going back over it, smoothing it out bringing it back into the tone of the rest of our mini, right? And what we get, red is a great color to do this with, by the way, because red is very naturally transparent. A little too much. All right, so what we get is that wonderful red with that orange highlight. Just like that. Again, if that's too orange for you, you know, I could go back to my original red. 
I like them really looking fiery. I think that's a cool look. You can always glaze back in some shadows if you want. Depends on what kind of a hurry you're in. Okay, so you can see how we can use dry brushing, that soft dry brushing method, to really get a nice quick look. Like, I mean, that guy's got great highlights. He's got edges, right, highlighted, stuff like that. And, and it didn't take us much effort at all. If we've got a lot of these guys to paint, we're trying to do an army. This can be a great technique, like dry brushing can still be really useful and still look pretty darn good. Like that doesn't look rough, like our, our dry brushing, but that's what we got to achieve that, right? That was zenithal, dry brush, glaze, dry brush, glaze. That's it. Real easy, real factory lineable, right? I could have 30 of these dudes set up and just be going bang, 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 bang through all of them. Okay, a couple final notes on dry brushing and what works well and what doesn't. Um, let's talk about wings. I mentioned fur a little bit and how you can use it. Wings are something I feel we need to talk about a little bit. Wings come in broadly sort of three varieties. Feathered wings, which are the easiest. Uh, feathered wings take the best to dry brushing because they have all this micro texture, right? All these little feathers, <laughs> yeah. Um, so this kind of stuff, his mane, his tail, great candidates for dry brushing. All of this, the like, the actual banding and stuff like this, these large flats, if we're gonna do it, we've gotta do it like I did it with the Blood Angel there. Nice and soft to kind of get these things and then a glaze over top. With these, you can often make it the last step. The rougher the texture, the easier it is to make dry brushing the final thing you do. Next up, let's call it rough leathery wings. So let's bring Mr. Chimera back in here. All right, this guy has like a ton of texture in his wings, all this rough texture. Um, like the manticore is like this and Archeon's wings are like this. They have all this like built in texture. They're not just flat. Um, if they have a lot of like this detail, the more it's rough, the more it's textured, the better it takes to dry brushing, okay? But then the third type of wing is what I would call more of like your smooth wing. So something more like this, this Demon Prince. Um, this guy has a little bit of texture built into the wing, but it's so minimal, right? Like, and it's not really gonna pick up your dry brush. So in this case, when it comes to these kind of soft wings, it's the it's this is where you'd want to look at something like the uh, something like either if you're going to use dry brushing for it, something like a soft dry brush, and you want to be moving opposite the direction you're trying to catch it. So I'm trying to catch it on these bones and on here. So I want to be moving back and forth. And that's something that's really important to impress upon people. I mentioned the directionality uh, that I was working like with this Blood Angel and with the Orc when I was zenithaling him, right? So when Mr. Orc was getting zenithaled, I only moved down to create that effect. Think about the direction your brush is traveling vis-a-vis -vis the texture. You wanna be moving perpendicular to the texture you're trying to get. So for example, to go back to Mr. Chimera here, okay, if I'm trying to get his wings, I wanna be dry brushing down. So that way it's, you want the edge to catch the pigment. If I go this direction, I'm gonna make a big mess. If I go down, it won't be as bad, okay? When it comes to things like these feathers, it's kind of like you sort of want to go down so you catch more of it, but in general, you're going to want to move this direction. But again, you could probably move horizontally on this. When it's like super micro detail, like these teeny tiny feathers or, um, you know, fur or something like that, you can be a little more loosey-goosey with it. Okay, so there we go. Uh, let's sum up. Dry brushing is a great technique. It's not something that should be made fun of or that good painters don't use or whatever. Like any other technique, it just needs to be used properly. The simplest application of it is a nice 
stiff brush, wiping away the vast majority of the paint onto a paper towel or something similar, and then moving across the model, uh, you know, generally bi-directionally and in the opposite direction of the detail you're trying to catch. So for example, these ribs here, I want to catch each rib, so I went up and down. I didn't go side to side because then I'll get paint in between the ribs. It's often a great first step to get color onto a model like this before I do something like wash where I can then smooth it out, okay? You can also use it for zenithal highlighting. If you don't have an airbrush or something similar, you can always just take over your black figures, you can take some white paint and just start moving down. So the, the brush is only touching the miniature in a downward direction to get that paint on there, okay? Giving you the equivalent of a zenithal. You can then glaze over it as normal and you can see we've got our nice angry little orc here. Grr. You know, that was just black undershade, white, and then I threw some green over it. And look at the detail and depth on that face, right? And how fast was that? Pretty, pretty fast. I didn't, like, there was no base coating to that. And then all this other steps. No, it was so fast. Finally, when we're talking about our smooth flats, um, we can certainly still use dry brushing to help pick out that detail, even over something like a base zenithal. We want to then focus more on soft dry brushing. We want to get a nice, super soft brush, something like this, which is, you know, a makeup brush. As I mentioned, you can get big packs of these from Amazon for very, very cheap. Um, these are great for this sort of purpose. You can dry brush over it with the color, too, to do things like undershade, where we can get this really rich, warm-looking blood angel with almost no real effort or... I don't, I don't want to say skill, that's not really what I mean. I just mean like it didn't It didn't take, there was no, you know, like lots of glazing to get a transition or anything like that. It was just fast, easy work, right? And then we've got this nice bright red. So there you go. Um, you can also, by the way, combine a guy like this with my warm, uh, if you watch my warm zenithal highlighting video, that's to be a way to deepen these shadows. Okay, here I, I did it in black, so some of the shadows look a little off, they look a little more black or purple than we would want. That's what happens when you put red over black, it sort of turns purple, but great way to com combine that as well. So, there you go. That's my ultimate guide to dry brushing. Uh, congratulations to you if you made it all the way through. Uh, it's a lot. It's a technique I still use all the time, more or less every base I do. Uh, I dry brush some. I start most of my minis with a soft dry brush to pick out the edges and stuff like you saw me do here. Uh, it can just be a great way to, to give you a better map to work with. Even if you use it for nothing else than like I did here where you take your black primed mini and you give that vertical dry brush to pick out the detail, it is going to make your life so much easier. I cannot explain how much easier it makes painting these minis if you're not going over straight black. If you, if you don't have the airbrush, if you can't zenithal, it's a great way to go. But there you go. That's dry brushing. Uh, I certainly hope that was useful for you. Uh, if you liked it, hey, give it a like down below. That's always appreciated. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Uh, if you have suggestions for future hobby cheating videos, feel free to leave those down below. I always appreciate suggestions. Uh, and of course, share this with anybody you like. Sharing is always the nicest thing you can do. But I appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.